Hello, calculus students. We are looking today at the free response question, Unit 6, Set A. This is question one of two questions. This would be a no calculator question. We're given this table of values. Let's look carefully at this table. The table of values represents the rate at which water leaks from a container modeled by a twice differentiable, differentiable function r where r of t is measured in gallons per hour. So keep in mind right away that this is a rate in gallons per hour. t is measured in hours for times between 0 and 1, so that first hour. Values of r of t are given in the table above for select values of time t. Okay, so we're given actual data values, so we have to use those values in the table. We're not given a function for r. We have to use those table values. Okay, so let's read part A. Use the data in the table to find an approximation for r prime of one half. Show the computations that lead to your answer and indicate units of measure. Alrighty, part A is for two points. And we need to find r prime of one half. Okay, this is a rate of change. Sorry about that. Okay, so again, this is a rate of change of this rate. It's an approximation because I have to use values in my table. And if I want the rate of change at one half, I'm going to use those symmetric values that are closest in my table to one half. And one half is right in between one third and two thirds. So I'm going to approximate that derivative with the slope of those symmetric points around time of one half. So r of two thirds minus r of one third over two thirds minus one third. These are table values. So r of two thirds is five minus r of one third, which is eight, all over two thirds minus one third, which is one third. What is that? You could probably stop there. You don't have to evaluate this, but I'll go further. Five minus eight, which is negative three, times the reciprocal of the denominator, which is 3 over 1, and I get negative 9. And you get points for correct units. This is a, again, rate of change of that thing that's already in a rate. So this represents negative 9 gallons of water per hour per hour. Negative 9 gallons per hour per hour. Alrighty, uh, this was worth two points. Let's see, you got a point for substituting in function values into that rate of change. You got a point for, sorry, I need to make sure. You got a point for the correct answer but it needs to be supported with function values. And you get one point for correct units. Okay, so correct one point for correct answer with supporting work, and one point for the correct units. Okay, carefully read part B. Okay, in part B, and this is a big three points, use the left Riemann sum with three subintervals, which is good, one, two, three, three subintervals indicated by the data in the table to approximate the integral from 0 to 1 of that function r of t dt. Okay, uh, so I want rectangles. So I'm going to approximate the area under the curve with three rectangles. And remember the rect areas of those rectangles are base times height. The base of each of those rectangles will be this width, which is one-third, one-third, and one-third, so one-third base times height. Since it's a left Riemann sum, I'm going to start on the left, so I need that r of zero, plus base times height, height on the left, which is r of one-third, plus base times height will be that function value r of two-thirds. Alrighty, what is that? I can factor out a one-third if I want to make my work a little bit easier. R of zero is 11 plus R of one-third, which is eight, plus the function value at two-thirds, 
which is 5. Alrighty, what is that? That is one-third of 19 plus 5, which is 24, which is 8. So, we have approximately, let's see, that integral from 0 to 1 of r of t dt is approximately 8 gallons. Remember those units were important. If my base was in hours of those rectangles times the heights, the function value, values, which were gallons per hour, and our resulting unit is in gallons. Alrighty, uh, this was worth three points. Let's see where you earned those points. You got one point for showing that left Riemann sum. You earned one point for a correct answer and you earned one point for the correct units. Alrighty, so those units are important. Okay, carefully read part C. Part C is only a one part portion of this problem. Use the data in the table again to evaluate the integral from zero to one third of r prime of t dt. The integral from zero to one third of r prime of t dt. Remember to evaluate a definite integral we take the antiderivative of this. Okay, well, the antiderivative of the derivative is simply r of t, the function itself, and we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 1 third. Okay, larger one, start with the upper, which is r of 1 third, minus that lower bound, r of 0. And now I have to use table values uh, for the value of that integral, and those table values are r of 1 third, which is 8 minus r of 0, which is 11. And I get negative 3. Alrighty, this is a one-point problem. You get one point for that correct answer as long as you have work with supporting work. Thanks for watching these videos because if you can improve just a couple of things and get a few more points here and there, that will kind of save you for something like part D. Remember on these free response questions, your goal is really about 50%. If you can get 50% correct, you're earning a 5 on the AP exam. So, stack up as many points as you can because part D will run through it. But to be honest with you, this is a topic that we have phased out. They have said that it's not important to teach this topic, and here it pops up on this practice test. So I will run through how to think about this uh, Part D, but again, get as many points up here as you can because they threw us a little curveball with this Part D. Take some time to read through it, and we'll work through what this express a limit as a definite integral, what this should look like. Okay, again, we'll see if we can grab any points here. The sum represented by the sigma notation, is a right Riemann sum with n subintervals of equal length. All right, that's what a Riemann sum is. Well, we do have to make sure that they're equal length. The limit of this sum as n goes to infinity can be interpreted as a definite integral. We're asked to represent that limit as a definite integral. So let's realize what we're asked to find. We're asked to represent <coughs> this limit as n approaches infinity, and n is the number of all those little tiny subintervals, how many of those little rectangles will we add up? So we need to represent the limit of this sum as k equals 1 to n of r of 1 fourth plus k over 2n times 1 over 2n, we're going to take that sum, the limit is the number of sum intervals, gets infinitely large, and you're asked to represent that as a definite integral. The integral, we need those limits of integration, and complete that integral. Okay, let's remember a couple of things up here. Do you recognize this as function values? And those function values represent the heights of the rectangles, and this then is that change in t, time in this case, dt at the end. 
So we recognize that this dt, that change in t, is equal to 1 over 2n. I look at this as my starting value. So I'm taking starting at 1 fourth, in this case it's a time, starting at a time of 1 fourth, we're going to take 1 half and split it into an infinite number of little tiny widths. I'm going to take 1 half, a width of 1 half, and split it into an infinite number of little widths, little tiny rectangles. Okay, so that means that I'm going to start at 1 fourth, that's t sub 0, and I'm going to split 1 half, what's 1 fourth plus a half, that's 3 fourths, into an infinite number of subintervals. Okay, I'm going to take my function values, in this case r is a function of t, and multiply it times dt. And that's what we're asked to find, to represent the sigma notation as a definite integral. Let's see where we could have gained some points. If you recognize that that change in t, that that's dt at the end there, that gives you one point. If you're able to change the limits of integration or provide the correct limits of integration, starting at a time t sub 0 of 1 fourth and recognizing that that width of that interval is 1 half, and if you're able to arrive at this correct definite integral, you earn yourself a point. All right, again, that was tricky. Try to read through it, if you can kind of make sense of that. And we'll hope for the best. Again, we'll struggle for points wherever we can, and we'll sacrifice a few that we need to. All righty, thanks so much for watching, and I will have a separate video for question two. Take care.